And Florida's first few public schools are set to restart in person learning next week. A trial by fire of their reopening plans required by the state. But how detailed are those strategies and how heavily were they scrutinized by the Department of Education? ABC 27's Forrest Saunders takes a look as schools try to rebound from COVID-19. The first day of class is weeks away for high school teacher Jessica Barthel. More than anything, I miss my kids. The North Florida woman wants to return to in-person learning, though she has little confidence her district is ready. It's a very palpable sense of grief for me, but it's not anywhere near the same kind of grief as if I start seeing deaths. Barthel worries her school's plan to return isn't enough and that the state is complicit rubber stamping reopen strategies to comply with what the federal government is pushing. They're not really considering the best needs of our constituents in our state as the epicenter. The Florida Department of Education required approval of the plans through the commissioner's controversial reopen order last month. Most have done so risking loss of funding for non-compliance. We wanted to take a closer look at them and after review found plans are inconsistent. They range from very detailed to pretty reserved. Take a look. This 37 page reopen plan belongs to Pinellas County. It's got a lot of contingencies, a lot of details, but then there's Orange Counties, which is half the size and half the details. And then you can go all the way down to Dixie County, which is just six pages. Most plans aren't much more than a checklist the department sent out to districts. Templates ask schools to agree to seven assurances, like providing in-person lessons. What they don't require, details on virus protections. The approval process looks pretty straightforward as well. According to this DOE email to Calhoun County, approval is, quote, focused on verifying each of the seven assurances. We're going to provide tremendous flexibility for districts to do what fits their community. That's Senate Ed Committee Chair Manny Diaz. He stands by the department system, saying it provides districts needed freedom in a diverse state. Look, it may just check off the boxes. It'd be very simple for them to be able to return. And for other districts, it's going to require a more elaborate um, plan, a scheme, uh, depending on the size of the district, depending on the infection rates uh, and, and what the obstacles are. But how will these varied plans actually hold up once reopening is underway? For that answer, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Barthel is hoping her school hits the brakes before it can. How much are our lives worth? At the Capitol, Forrest Saunders, ABC 27. Now, when it comes to state required school reopening plans, here's what our investigation found. Details vary by district. Most are simply a checklist agreeing to seven state requirements like in person learning. None of the requirements deal with virus protection and state plan approval is contingent on verifying districts will comply. In Florida, Jefferson, Suwannee, Hamilton and Franklin counties schools, they all start on Monday and we checked with Georgia Cook. Miller and the rest of Clinch County students go back the same day. TV and click the rebound section of our website. From there, you'll be taken to the rebound page. Scroll down and look for the keeping you safe button. Click on that and it will take you to this page where you can see all these different stories we have to help you get safely back to school.